All right, good morning. Today I'm going to do a video about boondocking basics. Uh, if you're just getting started in this, getting ready to hit the road, and you want to know how to do this as cheap as you can, how to camp free, how to find your resources quickly and easily, I'm going to give you the tips and tricks that I use to quickly do that and to camp as cheaply and free as much as possible. So this info that I'm going to be giving you is really for basic, brand new newbies that have no idea what to do and are just researching this and getting ready to get out on the road and trying to figure out, you know, how, how does everybody do this? First of all, what is boondocking? Uh, boondocking is where it is dry camping, dispersed camping. It's where it's not in a campground. You don't pay anything. There isn't any facilities, no garbage cans, no pit toilets, no running water or anything like that. And uh, I decided to make this video because a lot of times when I'm getting supplies and so forth in town, people will see me get out of my van and stop me and ask me, do I live in my van? How do you do it? I realize that there's a lot of questions on how to do the very basic stuff. People are researching this and getting ready to retire or because of jobs or whatever, they're hitting the road and getting rid of their, their home base. And they wanna know how to do it as free and as much as they can freely and cheap. And a lot of people ask me, do I sleep in um, parking lots and stuff like that? And uh, no, I don't do parking lots. So I'm gonna go through my top choices for where I free camp. And number one is BLM land, Bureau of Land Management land. And uh, then we have the national forests. We have conservation areas, wildlife areas, and state land. Like in Arizona, where I'm at now, you can get a permit and camp in other areas also for free, just the permit, a yearly permit, which is 15 to $20. So how do I find these locations? First of all, you're gonna need to get really familiar with your cell phone and getting some apps like um, freecamping.net, boondockers, campendium, all stays, roam. There's tons of apps out there that will help you find these locations. One of the most important features that you need in these apps is a filter that you can see public land versus private land. So when you're going down some of these roads, you know that you're on public land and where to start looking for spots. So people ask me if I park in a parking lot, I very rarely park in just a parking lot. Walmart is kind of like a last resort. Maybe you're just kind of traveling through. I never really feel exactly safe at Walmart. A lot of stuff goes on and like all night long at those kind of parking lots. Uh, Cracker Barrel would be my number one choice for an overnight stop. They have designated spots for bus and RVs. I uh, go in, use their little shop, use their bathroom, and uh, I always feel safe there, and I haven't had one that I couldn't stay at. Where Walmart, in some areas, you can't stay at. It's not a guarantee thing across the United States. You can't stay them in Colorado or California or Florida. Arkansas has tons of them where they have the over the low overhang thing so big rigs can't get in there so if you have a big rv you can't even get in there you can sometimes you know call ahead and this and that but i just really avoid walmart altogether and uh, try rarely to do a parking lot just when maybe we're traveling through an area and just need a quick overnight area overnight stop 14 day minimum it'll say at the beginning of a lot of these places there'll be the signage and it can tell you less sometimes it's only five days in places that are really busy um, other places it's longer but um, just look and uh, look around you'll see signage if not the blm blm.gov is going to be your friend you can find maps you can find other locations as it have camping and you'll need to know how to copy and paste the GPS coordinates into your Google Maps on your phone to find that location. And uh, that's, a, that's a necessity. So National Forest, there'll be the uh, same thing. You can go to the websites, the um, state websites, and see where they have camping. Then also go to the maps, look at it, zoom in on it, see if it, there's uh, pull off. See if there's locations that look like a possibility before you go there. If you just see a straight road and you don't see any pull offs, uh, you know, I don't even bother going in that area usually. 
got to see, you know, something that's going to be a possibility. And a lot of times I'll have it marked on my map. That looks like a good spot. And when I get there, that's the spot that I camp at. Uh, I Some people, they go to the spot that, that they're going to camp at next and scope it out and see if it's okay. I don't ever do that because uh, I don't want to waste gas going back and forth. And it's usually like on my path of where I'm going. So I don't scope it out ahead of time only via Google Maps. A lot of those apps that I mentioned will have reviews where people say the road's really rough or you need four-wheel drive. Like I said, all of those uh, will have different different things. Not everything has all that you need, but you'll have to use several of them to get exactly what you need. You find your area that you want to be in. You go to these apps. You look for possibilities. You go over the Google Maps and you look at them there to see if, what it looks like. And, uh, and then I also am looking at the weather all the time. So I check the weather in that area to make sure it's not going to be freezing or too hot or whatever. So we move according to the weather and uh, where our supplies are, what we want to see. So when we move locations, that's when we try to get our supplies. That's when we try to dump our trash, uh, get water, do laundry, get groceries, stuff like that. So how do I find those locations? I'll pick a spot if I'm in a city and I'll try to find everything in that area where I don't have to go all to one side of the town, this time, this side and back and forth. So for the trash, keep it small. We use a Walmart bag, plastic bag, whatever. So it's small and it'll fit in the receptacles outside of uh, any kind of store that we go to. Well, in a Walmart, there sometimes is garbage cans even by the cart returns. So you don't have to go all the way up to the front with your trash but you just one little bag grocery store maybe they get a little bag here and there we don't try to load anybody up but that way you don't it doesn't cost you anything and you don't have to make a trip to the dump um, if you have it in a big bag you're probably not going to fit it in any of those receptacles but do not use the receptacles or the dumpsters that are behind buildings or at a gas station that are enclosed in fences um, the, the dumpsters in the back of the stores, back of Walmart, back of grocery stores, back of, you know, all those, do not use those. Those are not for us to use. Those are not for public use. They're actually trespassing and you could get a ticket if you use those. But the ones that are by the front of the stores, the cart returns, the garbage by the, um, when you're getting gas, by the pumps, all that stuff, that is for public use. Just don't load it up too much. Just kind of divvy it out, bag here, bag there, and uh, that's that's done with. And then also, while you're getting rid of your trash, you got fuel or gas or whatever you need, I look at the front of the gas stations, and a lot of times there's these water kiosks right there. So then I just pull over to the side and I fill up my water. Now, water can range from 20 cents to 35 cents a gallon. But the thing is, if you have a big tank and you're trying to fill it up that way, you're going to need just to do jugs at a time. That's that's all I do. And I'll do, you know, 10 dozen jugs at a time and to refill my tanks. Uh, they don't normally have a water faucet like at an RV dump and a hose where you could fill up your water tank. So you'll need some kind of way to hold water and refill it with their one gallon or five gallon jugs at the dispensaries. Uh, if I don't know if there's water there, I don't see water. Uh, in the southwest and most of the west, there is water kiosks everywhere. And it's actually really easy to find. Sometimes I'll even search water on the Google Maps and I'll come up with a place. Uh, but you can press on the Google Maps, maybe in front of a grocery store, or in front of a gas station and use the Google Maps to scan and look to see if you see any water kiosks there. And a lot of times I just find it that way, but just just start looking. Sometimes they're in the middle of a parking lot, the square little building with the blue little roof, and I'll say ice and water. And then the, most of the times I find the ones that are just right next to the building outside the gas station or grocery store. And so water is really actually pretty easy for us to find. We don't use large amounts and don't have a huge tank to refill so I can just do gallons at a time and uh, you know I spend five dollars a week or so on uh, water all right so I went through how to find free camping uh, how to get water really cheaply and easily and then getting rid of your trash for free 
And what's left, what's left is if you need a dump station, I would say with those apps is your best bet. A lot of truck stops have dump stations, just start keeping your eye out. But most of the time those do cost. I don't need a dump station, so I don't have those marked on my maps. But I would say the apps have the best resources for finding where to use, where to dump your stuff, where to dump your, your tanks. All right, last but least is keeping clean. How do you keep clean? Uh, I shower outside. I have a solar bag. If the sun doesn't warm it up, I warm a little water up on my stove. I pour it in the solar bag. We have the pop-up uh, shower tent, and it costs me a dollar to shower. Um, if you can't do that, if you don't have a pop-up tent, if you don't have a way to heat up water, then you're going to be forced to go to truck stops where it's maybe 10 bucks a pop to shower, or you're going to go to a gym where you have to have a monthly membership or a rec center where it could be two to eight dollars to get in to shower. So uh, I just choose to do that. Some people have the one gallon pump sprayer to use as their shower. I also have a battery operated shower head where I could put it in a bucket of water and battery operated so i have a couple different ways i could shower but yeah i'm just buying the water for a dollar um actually it's i'm not even showering for a dollar because i use barely a gallon to shower so say 25 cents is what it's costing us to shower and uh yeah it's warm out sometimes we'll shower a couple times a week when it's windy yeah we take the shower tent down and we won't shower but maybe once that week but um and there's also hot springs sometimes around those will cost some are free kind of filter that in with your your shower regimen to kind of get a nice soak in there's one not too far from here that we're going to probably check out soon so for showers if we had a hard time maybe there's too many people around we didn't feel comfortable uh, showering in our pop-up tent or windy or whatever we've also done where we've paid the entrance fee to a park and use their facilities in their campground where it's maybe a pay shower also in there. So you paid your $8 to get in the um, state park and then to pay to use their showers. Um, I found friends that have been camping and I go to their campground and use their showers. Uh, there's quite a few different ways to keep clean, almost free. All right, so that is all my tips and tricks on how I quickly find my resources, get to your next spot, enjoy your next 14 days free, uh, shower for a couple dollars, get your water for a few dollars, and uh, just enjoy your life out here, living uh, as cheaply as you can without having to uh, do the rat race. Or if you're doing your retirement out here, enjoy the weather and uh, lots of people out here picking up rocks. This is a good spot, I can tell. But hope you enjoyed our basic boondocking 101 tips and tricks that I had for you today. Thank you. So make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And we'll continue in our next video with this location.